Chernobyl nuclear power plant was supposed to be the biggest in the world. However, instead, it became the biggest nuclear disaster in human history. The accident of April 26, 1986 left many towns and villages abandoned forever. Now thousands of tourists come here every year to learn about the tragic history of this place, to feel compassion, get unforgettable impressions, and see how nature is reborn and triumphant. I am going to the Chernobyl exclusion zone now and will spend there two days. I've been to Chernobyl four times already, but this time it will be something special because firstly, I will stay overnight in Chernobyl town in a simple Soviet hotel and many of you ask me about the time uh, of accommodation there, so you will see it yourself and will hear my impressions. And secondly, uh, I will have a unique exclusive tour to the Chernobyl nuclear power plant itself and you will be able to experience it with me. And of course, I will show you and tell you about the zone itself and all the locations that are usually covered during one day tour to Chernobyl, which by the way, you can book with us. So stay with me till the very end, not to miss out this adventure. Let's go. But before we get to the exclusion zone, let me answer the most important and frequently asked questions. The exclusion zone covers an area of approximately 2,600 square kilometers and placed under the police and security service of Ukraine control. So we all understand that this is a restricted area with a non-free public entrance. From Kyiv, the capital of Ukraine, it takes around one and a half, two hours by car or bus to get to Dityatke, the first checkpoint of 30 km zone. Basically, you'll be crossing two checkpoints of 30 and 10 km zones to see the power plant and Pripyat. So let's figure out what 30 and 10 km zones are. 10 km zone – it's obligatory evacuation zone. Nobody lives there. So if you see people there, it means they are workers or tourists. 30 km zone is a voluntary evacuation zone. There are people who are staying in between their shifts and some self-settlers. What about radiation and is it safe to visit the Chernobyl exclusion zone? And that is the most important question. I'm not going to give you a lecture on alpha, beta and gamma radiation. This you will hear in details on your tour to Chernobyl. Let's talk a little bit in general about how much radiation you can be exposed to. Please note that you are not absorbing radiation, you are being exposed to it. It doesn't mean you are taking it with you to your home. On your tour to Chernobyl, you all will have a special device, Geiger counter, which measures the radiation. It will be beeping all the time and you will see different numbers. Those numbers are showing radiation in microsieverts. The average gamma level of radiation in European cities makes up to 0.25 microsieverts. The fatal dose for humans is 4 sievert. As an example, on a flight from Kiev to New York, you can get around 22 microsieverts. In the end of the tour, your Geiger counter will show how much radiation you've been exposed to. I've got 0.014 microsieverts. This answer suggests the conclusion – it is absolutely safe to go to the Chernobyl exclusion zone as a tourist, and not even for one day. So this is the plan for today, what we are gonna see and what usually visitors see on a day trip to the Chernobyl exclusion zone. We are gonna explore the Chernobyl town, then we will head to the non-existent Chernobyl 2 town where the Raider Duga is located. We'll see buried village of Kopachi, panorama of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. Uh, we'll have uh, lunch in a Soviet-style canteen and, of course, we will have a walk in the ghost town of Pripyat. 
And uh, on the second day, I'm gonna visit the nuclear power plant itself. I'll go inside. Uh, that's uh, quite a unique and exclusive material. Uh, this is not uh, a part of a regular tour, but anyway, uh, you can book such uh, experience, adventure on your private tour to Chernobyl. Many people don't know the difference between Pripyat and Chernobyl. Pripyat is the satellite city of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant, located about 3 kilometers from the station. However, at the time of opening the nuclear power plant, Pripyat hadn't been built yet. That's why the power plant was named after the nearest large city, Chernobyl, which is quite old city and uh, located around 15 kilometers from the station. So the name Chernobyl went down in history as the symbol of this tragedy. Now it's partly abandoned. The residential buildings of Chernobyl have been turned into dormitories, where the workers of the exclusion zone live. And two hotels where tourists can stay overnight are located in this town. There is no statistic how many people live in Chernobyl. Just from the latest information, there were around 30 self-settlers live and up to 1,500 people who are shift workers in the zone. The city of Pripyat is completely abandoned. Now we are heading to the 10 km zone where the power plant is located as well as Raider Duga and the buried village of Kopachi. This huge construction behind me is a super secret raider, which Soviets built during the Cold War and tried to hide in the middle of forest. The location was chosen not by chance, because this device consumed a lot of electricity and it was assumed that the first and the second units of the nuclear power plant supplied electricity directly to the station of this raider. But what was the purpose of this construction? This radar was supposed to track to catch signals of missile launches from the territory of the North America during the Cold War. But it never worked properly and basically it was the waste of time and money. Now it's time for lunch in a Soviet-style canteen. Basically, this is the place where workers of the power plant have their daily meals. You'll be checked first whether you are clean and doesn't have any radioactive dust on you, then you're welcome to enjoy your lunch. The food is absolutely safe and you may not worry, you won't be glowing after eating here. As you can see, the lunch place is very simple, so the same as food. They have almost the same menu for many, many years and there is not much of a choice, but anyway, you'll get a salad, the first course, which is usually borscht, the main dish, today we have rice with meat, a bun and a drink. Not fancy, but it's tasty though. This observation deck of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant is a special place where you can get so close to the force reactor which exploded. And this is the only place where it's allowed to take pictures of it. From here you can see in details the sarcophagus that covers the building of fourth power unit. It's officially the largest mobile engineering structure in the world with a weight of more than 37,000 tons and 109 meters high. 
To understand how huge it is, let's imagine the Motherland Statue in Kyiv or the Statue of Liberty in New York, any of these ladies could be put inside. So this unique construction was created to preserve the strong radiation background of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. Now it makes it possible to protect the surrounding area from radioactive substances. Also here on the observation deck you can see a monument to the liquidators of the consequences of the Chernobyl accident. After the disaster at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant, thousands of residents from surrounding villages were evacuated. Most of their houses were destroyed and buried. The only one building is survived. It's a kitten garden in the village of Kopachi. You can get inside and see the toys, piece of furniture and many other stuff. It looks so creepy and sad at the same time.